So now you walk out of your new home and you have your new Jannah body and you start to observe the ambiance and the environment of Jannah. And the first thing you might wonder is, what is that smell? You see, scientifically, smell has the power to evoke even more than what we see and what we taste. It's the most overwhelming of our senses that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us. So think about what is it like to breathe the air of Jannah? And that's why the fragrance of Jannah is spoken about so much in the Quran and Sunnah, because smell actually has the power to do two things. It evokes both memory of the past and excitement about the future. Think of the Prophet Ya'qub Jacob, when he was smelling Yusuf السلام, from afar, and how much comfort the fragrance of his shirt brought to him. Life had no taste to Ya'qub without the smell of Yusuf السلام. And think of Anas ibn Nadr, the uncle of Anas ibn Malik, may Allah be pleased with them, as he was rushing towards Uhud when everybody else was running away. And he was saying, Inni ajidu al Jannah. I can smell the sweetness of Jannah behind Uhud. As if to say that nothing in this life brought any joy after the scent of Jannah was smelled by him. And how are the believers' souls taken in this life? What are they welcomed with? The Prophet وسلم, says, tayyibah, That Allah sends upon them gentle, beautiful breezes. And every single Muslim that is left on this earth will encounter it and die peacefully until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala resurrects their souls once again. So when you enter into Jannah, it is all around filled with this amazing fragrance, which the believers will be able to enjoy even before they enter. In the famous hadith of the last man to enter paradise, the Prophet Sallallahu said that this man could smell it from outside of its gates and it just made him long for Jannah that much more. And the Prophet ﷺ said that the smell of Jannah could reach you from a distance of more than a hundred years. Think about that in terms of worldly distance. The context of the Prophet ﷺ saying that is when he said, whoever kills a man from the people of Adhimma, which are non-Muslims that live under Muslim protection, that tyrant will not smell paradise even though its smell could reach you from the distance of a hundred years. So the oppressor will never smell Jannah. But SubhanAllah, the Prophet ﷺ was taken aback by the smell of someone's perfume during the night of Al-Asra'u al-Mi'raj. And who was it? Jibreel السلام, says to the Prophet ﷺ when he asks, what is that smell, that beautiful smell? He says, it's the perfume of the hairdresser of the daughter of Fir'aun. The perfume of the hairdresser of the daughter of Fir'aun. Of all people, why her? It seems kind of random, right? But this was a young woman who was combing the hair of the daughter of Fir'aun. And when she dropped it, she said, Bismillah, in the name of Allah. And just for that, Fir'aun throws her and her babies into the bottom of a burning ditch, only to have the Prophet ﷺ ask Jibreel ﷺ about her amazing fragrance in the highest heaven. So while the perfume of the oppressed is overwhelming, the oppressors like Fir'aun will never even smell Jannah. And there's a powerful connection there. So when do you notice the smell? Now, every footstep in Jannah provokes a new smell of musk. So as you walk out of your door, you smell it here, you smell it there. The Prophet ﷺ said the burps of the people in Jannah are musk. And the Prophet ﷺ said that the incense burners of the people of paradise will be aloe wood, and that's going to be burned perpetually and continue to increase the good smell of paradise. As for the temperature, it is always pleasant and perfect. The rainfall is never stormy, and it's only there to serenade the people of paradise. You never have to stay indoors. Like think if you go to a vacation resort and you have to constantly monitor the weather, you don't have to stay indoors in Jannah at any point because the weather is bad. In fact, the Prophet ﷺ said that while we are in paradise, a cloud will come over us having that which no eye has ever seen and no ear has ever heard of. And the people will say to the cloud, Amturi alayna, rain upon us. And the cloud will actually respond and say, Ma turiduna an umtirakum, what would you like me to rain upon you? And the Prophet ﷺ said, it will then rain whatever you wish upon you and however much you desire.
Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send a harmless wind and it will spread heaps of musk on their right and on their left. And then it will come on their faces and their hair and their garments. And it will please them in ways that they continue to increase in beauty. Now, is this in the daytime or the nighttime? Is there even a sun and a moon in Jannah? And Imam Al-Qurtubi said, the scholar said, there is no night and day in paradise. Rather, they will be in everlasting eternal light. And the only way they know that nighttime has come is because the curtains or the screens will be put up and the doors will be closed and they will know when daytime comes because the curtains and the screens will be taken down and the doors will be opened. It's also narrated that the people of Jannah will wear one gown in the morning and another in the evening. So you have nighttime and daytime colors, but it's all the same in Jannah. لا يرون فيها شمسا And no sun is ever seen. Now Imam al-Sammak rahimahullah, he said that I met Abdullah ibn Abbas anhuma in Medina and that was after he became blind. So it was when he was very old. And I said to him, what is the ground of paradise like? He said, it is white marble of silver as though it is a mirror. And he said, I asked him, and what is the light of paradise? And Ibn Abbas said, have you ever seen the light right before sunrise? Its light will be like that, but there's no sun and there's no cold. Now, where is that light coming from in Jannah? And Imam Ibn Taymiyyah says, وَالْجَنَّةُ لَيْسَ فِيهَا شَمْسٌ وَلَا قَمْرٌ وَلَا لَيْلٌ وَلَا نَهَارٌ In Jannah, there's no night, there's no day, there's no sun, no moon, but morning and evening will be known by a light appearing from where? From the throne of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. So the light is shining from Allah's throne and that light is illuminating all of paradise from above. And how beautiful is that light? So if the lights stay on, when do we get to sleep in Jannah? Because I'm sure Jannah is sleep for some people. And the question is, why would you want to sleep in Jannah? The Prophet ﷺ was asked, do the people of Jannah ever sleep? And he said, that sleep is the brother of death and the people of Jannah do not die. Now you may want to relax a bit in paradise, but why would you want to sleep? And if you think about sleep in this life, it really is a mercy to us so that we can rest and sometimes maybe even escape our troubles or at least refresh ourselves a bit. But what is there to escape from in Jannah? And what do you need to refresh from? Your body, your mind, and your soul are perpetually refreshed. Now, another element of this is that in this life, you fought your sleep and you fought the comfort of your bed, seeking the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the coolness of Jannah. And when you think about in this life, when you finish a long day of work, your body is too exhausted to enjoy the fruits of your labor. But once you get to Jannah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not just giving you the reward, but He's giving you the capacity to enjoy it in a way that you never could have in this life. <laughs>